Hello, everyone. Welcome <laughs> to the workshop. How are you Hello. doing today? Hello. Hi, Uwe, Esther, Jean. We have still a couple of minutes to go, so we will uh, we will wait a couple of minutes. But uh, that would be great if in these couple of minutes you can make sure that you have a photo of yourself. And we will share to Miro board, which we'll be using during the workshop. So please make sure you have uh, access to Miro as well. That would be great. And now we can get started. Yeah. So Marcella. I will, I will just put the link of the Miro to see if you can access, you can start accessing to it. And we already see Arisa, Daniel, Dean. If any troubles, please let us know with accessing. Yeah, Takumi. For anyone joining uh, right now, welcome everyone. Uh, Hello. On the group chat, hopefully you can find a link to Miro. So let's use these couple of minutes that we have until the start of the session to make sure you can access Miro board, which we'll be using during the session, okay? Uh, I don't know if people who just joined can see the link on the chat. If not, you will send it not. again. No. Okay, so okay, you have I to resend it, it every time. Okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. So, just for you to get familiar. So, we have 10 people on Miro already. We have how many people here? 16. 15. Mm -hmm. So just a question, the photo of yourself is is it's just real photo or can be avatar? Um I don't know actually up to you, whatever it feels comfortable to you. <laughs> yeah, it's okay if you if you want to share your avatar too. <laughs> yeah. So again, for those who are just joining now, we uh, still have one minute to go. So in this time, please make sure uh, you have access to Miro. I don't know, Marcella, maybe we can send once again in the chat because yeah. every time someone joins. We can give them new, new access again. Okay. Also it would be nice to have a photo of you at hand We'll be using it just in a second. So we are 17 so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see people. Okay. 
Okay, let's wait two minutes more, maybe, for... Hey. Hello, everyone. How are you? Nice. We are just about Hi. to start. Let's wait, uh, you know, a couple of minutes for the latecomers. But meantime, we are sharing the link to meet a mirror board that we'll be using during the session. Okay, so just please make sure you have access to that. We will be resending the link on the chat all the time for the people who are just joining again. And also please make sure you have a photo of yourself at hand because we will be using it for our warm up just in a second, okay? I'll share the mirror link once again for those who just arrived. Okay, we have 14 people in Miro. We have 20 people here. So please let me know if, know if you have any troubles accessing. Okay, now we have a lot of people joining now. So let's wait a couple of minutes more. Maybe we can start five past. <clears throat> so again, for those people who are just joining, uh, you can find a link to the mirror board that we'll be using during the session in the chat. So please make sure you have access to that. That's important for you to enjoy the session. I'll send once again. <laughs> okay, thanks, Marcella. <laughs> hey. Okay. We are almost everybody. Okay, we are getting getting there, getting there, almost there. So again, for everyone joining right now, hello, welcome to our workshop. Um, you will find a link to Miraboard in the chat. So please make sure you can access that and we'll be starting in two minutes, okay? Everybody already got really busy putting their pictures in the yeah? icebreaker, oh, yeah, so that's cool. Are... Yeah. Nice, so that will be, that will be, we are, we are ready going ahead, so that's good. All right, one minute more and we can start. Is there anyone who doesn't have a link to Miro? Is there anyone who just joined and doesn't have a link? Okay. One more. I'll be sharing my screen anyway, but of course, since you have access to Miro already, you can just uh, go directly to be there. But in case you drop out or anything happens, I'll keep sharing my screen, okay? So you can locate yourself. All right, I guess we can get going. <laughs> okay, well, hello everyone and welcome to the workshop about aligning future vision in large organizations. Uh, we are very pleased to have you all here today. Hopefully it will be an exciting and useful session for all of you. Just a quick introduction to who we are. Uh, we are uh, Ola, Alexandra Kozawska, but you can call me Ola, and Marcela Machuka. I am coming from Poland, but I'm currently living in Spain. I work at the Spanish bank BBVA, BBVA. And I'm also uh, co-leading service design drinks uh, here in Madrid. 
I'm also a space geek personally, so I like anything about space rockets and astronauts and so on. <laughs> Marcela, if you'd like to introduce yourself quickly. Yes. Um, so in my case, uh, I'm Mexican and uh, similar to Ola, I'm living in Denmark and not in my home country. So I'm connecting from Denmark and um, I'm a proud dog owner of two little dogs that you might hear a bit of noise in the background because one of them is a puppy. So I'm sorry about that. And uh, I have 10 years or so of services and experience uh, across consultancy and banking industry. And uh, I'm working at Nordea Bank, that is a Scandinavian bank with presence in various countries. And you can find me in this LinkedIn link. If you want to add me as a friend, I will be of glad. Of course, yeah, the yeah. same, the same. Hopefully we can connect, which is not that easy in online conferences, but okay. So somehow, some housekeeping rules. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, I guess you, many of you are very experienced service designers so or more. Um, so you know a little bit about these boards and the navigation or the way we, we set up this board this time is a, a left to right navigation and right to bottom like we will be scrolling like going deep diving into certain topics uh, you will see the two different colors in the boards and normally the dark the dark color is when we are sharing something and the white boards are when you are going to be doing exercises or collaborating with with each other mm -hmm. and a couple of rules we have just two hours with each other, which is not so much time and quite a lot of, uh, to cover. So we will try to be quite strict with times, uh, just to let you know. And we would like to ask you for your full attention. We know that it's easy to get distracted in the remote environment, to check your email, check your phone, but you know, we have this time together. So please take full advantage of it and we can try to avoid distractions during this time. Also, well, we will try to practice one conversation at a time. So we are uh, more than 30 people in this call. So please, if you are not talking or not intending to talk at the moment, just as a good practice, let's put mute to avoid any background noises because it can, it can accumulate quite quickly. There'll be moments to share and to discuss and to talk everyone, but while we are presenting or someone else is presenting, let's put ourselves in mute mode. And of course, all of you are probably uh, experienced designers and you know this rule, but just to remind ourselves to put full sentences on the post-its, which will be very helpful for everyone else and for us later on to, to document the exercise. Okay, cool. Let's see what are we going to do today in our session. Yeah. The goals of the session is, um, I mean, for us is to share with you uh, how we have been working on uh, with execution teams uh, to empower them and I mean empower each other because we've been part of those teams to bring bolder ideas into a project uh, to explore ways to involve the high level leadership in the design project and and, and set a strategic direction for ideations. Um, we also going to specifically practice a couple of tools that we have been used and that they have been helpful or successful to align discussion among senior level management. So like hopefully you will like take these tools with you. And we will share uh, different ways we use to visualize, synthesize, uh, articulate or like the different stakeholders vision into one single map where you can overview like how or what's the direction that the leadership is taking the organization into. So hopefully we will cover this in this session. Yeah, that's the that's ambitious plan. And to do that, we will have a, a agenda for today. So the welcome, we just, we just did that, the introduction of ourselves, uh, Marcela and myself, uh, the workshop goals and agenda. This is what we are having here. In a second, just in a second, we are going to do the icebreaker to get to know each other a little bit more. Then we will present you a case study of a project uh, on which we worked together with Marcela at the BBVA. 
uh, to show you where is this coming from, where is this idea for this workshop coming from and the methodology we used and that we are going to present to you. And after this, it will be your turn to practice some of the tools that we will present to you. And you know, we believe that you learn best by doing. So most, most of the time of this session will be an interactive session for you to practice uh, specific tools and discuss and reflect on what we did, okay? And at the end, we'll present you a stakeholder vision map. So how can you represent present your results in a visual way, in an engaging way to, uh, to communicate your, your research, your project. And at the end, we'll have a moment to share and discuss uh, everything that we did and any questions and doubts that, that you have. Okay, so they are any questions or something you just shout out otherwise. Mm -hmm. Also in yeah. the chat, you can put any yeah. question. Yes. There's actually a, a question in the chat about the okay. Miro board. That it is it going to be available afterwards? Um, I think that we could like take away part of a more um, discreet uh, information about the organization, and we can leave the rest available for everybody. So yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's proceed to the icebreaker, okay? We ask you to prepare a photo of yourself. I see that many of you already put great photos in here. Mm, we have a collage. Oh, nice. For those that haven't, please, you can feel free to put your photos anywhere here in this white space. And the icebreaker that we are going to do, it's really cool, I really like it. <laughs> and it's about superpowers. So we want to get to know your superpowers as designers or as just people, any superpower that you might have, okay? So we want you to take your picture and uh, be a little bit creative and draw over it your superpowers. So become a superhero. And, you know, it would be good to describe them as well. Don't forget to write your name on the photo. Like this, we can get to know each other. And feel free to include your Twitter or LinkedIn account also for others to be able to connect with you. So we will have a nice networking board that you can take away with you afterwards of all the participants. So yeah, for example, mm -hmm. here we have, you know, super hearing, Googles that can read between the lines, shield against nonsense, you get the idea. One technical suggestion, probably you are familiar with Mira as well, but that's nice to know as well, that if you want to draw some weird shapes, like free drawing, you can just deactivate the smart drawing feature and then you can just be free to draw whatever shapes you want. Okay, so we will give you like five minutes to, to do that. I set the timer. Okay. Okay, so we can go. Five minutes from now. Stop. Hands Stop. out. Hands <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> okay, so we have really good, really good pictures here. You can zoom out and see all beautiful selves, yourselves around. Feel, feel free to connect. Since there are so many of us, we, we will not go through all of them, but you know, we just can go through super power sensing stakeholder needs from Prokia. That's a, nice, that's, a, that's a nice one. We have inspire, engage people, serious play. I can read others in an invisible way. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Remote with, with some, with, with house bottom for each other people's deck. And Courtney Docker, ability to stay laser focus at the perfect yeah, yeah. hand. That's a good one. Shoulder I love the eyes. Laser focus eyes. Great. Okay. So in case you, you need to you know the superpowers of of the rest of us, there there we go. There you have this is your board. Thank you. This was a great exercise. Um I love to see a, a lot of ears. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, so good. nice, a lot of hearts. 
a lot of little light bulbs in the brains. All right. A smile that always breaks their eyes. Kata. Thank you very much, everybody. I think these will help us also when we are in the team. We can know what, what the people in our team that we will be assigned to, which superpowers we have in a team. And now we go to the next part. I guess I'm going to steal everybody's attention. And, and if you don't mind, I will pull you everybody to, to where I'm looking at, at the screen at the moment. So I can have your attention. Uh, for the following minutes, I will share with you one of our most beloved case studies uh, where uh, Ola and me got to work together, together with a bunch of other designers as well. Um, this project is called Ranch Reloaded and is one of the branch of the future projects that we have had in BBVA. I mean, because it was not the first one. Actually, that was one of the reasons we call it a branch reloaded. And for the ones who don't know what BBVA is exactly, because one of my colleagues asked, what is BBVA? And it's, it's a Spanish bank with presence in 35 countries and with a personal banking brand, like with branches in um, at least 10 countries. So it's quite a big bank. Uh, most of the countries where it has presence speak Spanish, but it also has presence in Turkey and the US and Portugal. So there's also several languages um, that we they speak. Yeah. I even continue calling we. <laughs> um, so for this branch of the future challenge that we had, um, we were yeah, presented with the challenge. What is the role of the BBBA branch of the future in the future? So what are our branch going to be bringing? What value are going to be bringing to our customers? No? And just for you, like zooming in a little bit before I start with the, with the tough part, uh, it was a really amazing project where we got to tackle into the value proposition. What was the value proposition? And also many other super fun aspects like what kind of spaces we will have for what purposes, or even for we got to talk about the different roles that will be in the in the in the future of the branch there will be different roles like a social and digital host or a financial coach or an engagement coach like we change the roles of the branch that we will have in the future um, the different spaces we got them to define in plenty of detail like different aspects of the space and not only the space itself, like I mean, you can see when you go into each of the areas that we define, we define an area called the agora, another one, the bar, the heart, and the bench. And for example, in the agora, we define not only what is going to happen in that area, but uh, how people will circulate, what kind of roles will be uh, used in that space, and what kind of technology will be there available uh, from apps to different uh, devices that will be present. Um, we also define a space called the bar. The Agora was mainly, for example, to extend the branch to the exterior, to the street and bring people in from the exterior, invite them in through content and events. Um, the bar was mostly to support customers into the, any digital issue that they could they could uh, face that they could just walk in and get someone to support them and to solve their digital issue in like a bar setting, fast track kind of style. And for that also, it could be connected through their app so they could quickly request like, I want support and then they could go in and quickly get support. Also, we had the heart where we got to define what will be the future role of the, the different uh, roles of the people who will be uh, working at the branch, what kind of schedules they will have, uh, how their time will be managed, what kind of skills will they need. 
and how they, will they be like uh, circulating around like what will be their well-being as, as employees so the heart was not only where the space where they were going to work but also where they will be uh, having a healthier environment for work uh, we also defined the bench which was a much much more private way to get in advice about your financial uh, issues and in this case we this, we define in within the team that the future of the branch will be for, for deal, to deal with more complex issues that you cannot deal remotely or digitally with through the digital channels. So you need actually a presence to have like a fluid conversation, a private fluid conversation with someone. So this is a huge project with a lot of aspects covered and just for you to illustrate a bit, like we have participation of like almost more than 30 people without counting the high level stakeholders, uh, five different countries, uh, and number of departments from data, human resources, marketing, brand, engineering, new digital business and spaces, et cetera. Like this is just one workshop, right? one of the main workshops we have. And all those roles are represented here. Um, so to achieve these, we use many design methods, but before like getting into all the fantastic ideation and like all the methods we had, we needed to clarify certain things because all the people from the different departments that were working in the project, they all belong to different silos in the organization. And those silos have their leadership and the leadership have different ideas of where the organization is going. And some of them are saying they're going to say they're, the future of the branch are going for like sales, sales, sales. Other people are saying, no, no, there's like some uh, branch space problem. So we need to fix that. And everybody has like different agendas. So the project team comes back with all those uh, conversations and they are like confused and they say, what's the goal? Am I doing the right thing? Like, should I be like, uh, pushing for what my boss is telling me or something. Uh, what is the scope of this? Is this covering this problem or not? So there's a lot of confusion when you start like such a massive endeavor. And what we had to do or what we uh, do or normally do in projects is that um, mostly try to bring clarity about those conversations and alignment. So for that, I think that we end up doing our beloved uh, stakeholder map to identify who are the main influencers or the main forces influencing the direction of this project that we should take in account. And in this project, which was quite big, quite political, with a lot of impact in the organization, we ended up interviewing almost 20 key leadership members, stakeholders, we call them. And uh, from those 20 people that we interview, like we needed to see how can we uh, establish this conversation with them so that to bring more clarity to all this confusion no? from the different members of the team. And we use these two tools that are like strategic GPS and future scenarios that are the ones that we are going to show you. Like, so we didn't only do like a traditional interview, but also brought these little tools to help us to support the conversation. Um, so the strategic TPS, uh, what it was helping us is that there was a lot of confusion about, oh yeah, the, in, in the future of the branch, are we going to be selling, selling, selling like we do today? Or is it going to have a different role or can it have a different role? Um, so we are clear about that or oh, it's going to be for customer acquisition like getting new customers so it's going to be used to like take care of our current customers and cross sell or oh, are we going to be more than only uh, financial products because they were already even making some experiments somewhere else about like putting other kind of products like even a travel travel agency inside the brand so like what about this? What about that? So all these confusions, we brought them into opposites, like tensions, 
And we ask directly the stakeholders, say, hey, what do you think about this? And ask them to position themselves in which part. And even if you look at the pictures, they are actually marking the GPS there, or they are like looking at the stimuli that in the interview itself. So uh, this is one, the strategic. The future scenarios, we brought them in and they were more to, to sense the stakeholders and the organization if how much, how disruptive we can grow with this future. Can it be really disruptive or is it going to be more conservative? And actually some funny story about this case is that there was already one of the sponsors of the project pushing for one of the ideas. And that is like that community incubator that you see there. Um, so we also wanted to know uh, what the others are thinking about this idea that this person is pushing. So we can understand and sense what the rest of the organization could think about an idea like that. So we brought it in as one of the scenarios and we post other like more divergent scenarios that could trigger more conversation and stimulate like the conversation around more disruptive pos possibilities. So you see there's like keywords and uh, pictures and they could make up almost anything of them and interpret them as they please. And they, they bought the game and they, they actually gave us a lot of information related to that. Um, after we did all the interviews, we came back, analyzed each of these, uh, each of their discourses and did a very exhaustive mapping of what the leadership was seeing about the future of the branch, you know, what they were saying. And we brought insights like that the branch was going to be more of an advisory for complex things because all the simple things will be a, a deal with in digital spaces, or it will be more a trust space for build human relationships, or it will be more of experience as a place more than a, a sales place. So like it will be more about experience in the brand than actually selling products. So, because all the selling will be happening in digital. It was more about financial and digital coaching, like about helping people, supporting them, and like getting across all the issues that they got when they were doing their financial life or the digital with the digital tools. It should be more adaptable and flexible because things might change very quickly. And when right now today we are witness of that, and less product or, uh, oriented and more problem solving. Um, that was the main insights from the like open conversations. But when we, for example, checked how they were sensing or what they were sensing about these disruptive scenarios, like for example, the human incubator that was the idea of one of them. Some people were like, oh yeah, it will be a place for financial education, of course, because it should be more for coaching um, or it should be more advisory oriented or more of a community. So they liked that this image inspired community uh, and also for all, but they should be a facilitator for all kinds of customers because for some of them, this brought the idea that it was more about uh, a specific type of entrepreneur. So like this, this, met this uh, a specific scenario trigger them to say, not for specific customers, for all of the customers. So the, in this way, we could gather what they were feeling about the future of the branch. For example, this uh, uh, Sherpas concept, uh, we, it was like the branch without a branch. So like the branch comes to you and the branch is the advisory. It's more of a over or Airbnb model where there's no physical space, but you like it comes to you. And they were saying, yeah, I love that because it reflects the character of being human, but it's uh, more customer oriented, but still we will need a physical space. So like that we got. Oh, it's got good opportunity for advisory and coaching, but maybe not for all the customers will be possible or will be affordable and stuff like that. So all these scenarios were inspiring and trigger them ideas in the positive. And even when it was not in the positive way, we could see what was the other, other side. So we could have a richer conversation with them. 
And then when we brought the GPS, which is kind of a more um, controversial part of the of the of the discourse or of the strategy, like they were saying, for example, when we put the post, we organized them, uh, the information in a way that they could see what was the direction where most people was going, but also the reasons why people was going more about the highlighting experience uh, or creating more engagement and who was not so much, but also the reason why they were not so much into being an experience and being uh, more about uh, about the maximizing sales, for example. And some of them were saying, yeah, bread for today, hunger for tomorrow or something like that. So it's interesting, like we recover many quotes from real stakeholders because I think, uh, or oh, we thought in um, the team itself can recognize the words of certain specific people because they are very familiar to them. So they can see that actually this, these people said this and this is how the, the leadership is thinking. And even when there's like positions that are not so clear in the opposite, like also, for example, provide a marketplace for specific products only. So a financial marketplace uh, or only BBVA products. Like this talks about more like if the bank should sell only products from its own uh, line or it could be a, a marketplace for other banks too and some of them were like we have brand power so uh, they were aware that like it's not going to be either or but because we have brand power or uh, be human but digitally enabled like digital supported but human driven so like some of them were not like either in one contrast of it also we could recover some trends after those conversations, like people were uh, bringing some trends that they thought they were going to influence that future of the brand, of the branch. So that's how we did our map, that the intention was uh, in that sense, in that moment, uh, to bring all the ideas of the high level leadership, all the silos, what they are saying, and put them together aligned in one single place. So people can see like, okay, so this is a, good, a direction the project can go and nobody's going to get fired or something. Um, so to bring more transparency and sometimes even to connect this discourse because these, these stakeholders, the high level ones, they rarely sit together in the same place talking about the same issue. And in this way, we could connect all their discourses and they can know what each other think. So that was the way we used the tool. That helped us to sharpen the project objectives, what are we, we were going to cover and what we were not, like to identify the scope of the project and the objectives and what we, which was the direction we could actually go. And then of course, we went to benchmarks and, and bringing the customer research in, co-creating and doing like Lego work and all the fun things that we wanted to do. Well, then we could come up with this like uh, concept and prototype and, and test some of the ideas that we had for the branch of the future. Yeah, and um, as Marcela very well explained, all the case study, but the methodology itself is also, uh, we also published it in an article in Touchpoint some time ago already, but you can download the article here in the link below. So feel free to download it. This article is more about this methodology as such, so to say white label, because we couldn't at that time include details of the project itself that Marcela has just presented to you, but all the methodology and the description of the tools, uh, the templates, so to say, is there. So feel free to download it for your own use and a later lecture <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah, we okay. did this project in 2017, so mm -hmm. now it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. Okay. And uh, next, I think we believe that uh, we could share with you 
uh, how to work with these two tools and how could you bring them to your own projects. Um, we thought uh, we, will bring, we will give you like a five scenarios of different uh, companies for SETI future scenarios where you could potentially use uh, tools like this. And um, I will start like quickly with the strategic GPS a little bit to have an explanation of what we could do with it in uh, different teams. Um, so we will uh, propose this tool, the strategic GPS, and as you saw, like we use it to bring in all the tensions or all the different uh, possibilities, strategic possibilities that an organization can go and mainly bring clarity. So uh, if, when you are doing the debriefing of a project and you start sensing that there's some level of confusion about the direction or some tensions between the, the team members that belong to different silos, um, you can help bring in clarity by setting up all these strategic tensions and putting them into access. And if people have some discussion about if should we go digital or should we go more human or should it be free or should it be pay? Are we going into this direction? Or is it more experience driven or is more sales driven the team, the project? So you can bring those tensions and clarify them uh, with an exercise like this. So um, for this challenge, we uh, we give some some tips and it's like connect with the specific directions of the challenge. Think of the extreme positions, a human versus digital or um, a more acquisition or more engagement, more free or more paying, whatever you see that are the tensions in, in the, the strategic direction of the organization. Try to avoid that people position themselves in the middle, like, and if they do well, that's fine, but it, it can be more sporadic and look for the streams specifically in the topics that are not clear to the team. I mean, it's all about bringing clarity and to set up the scope or to set up the, the direction of the project. Um, we will give you your own GPS for your own case. So we hope we can uh, help you there. So the next exercise, uh, so we are going to do two exercises in the breakout time, okay? So, and the second exercise is the future scenarios. Uh, so again, like I said, I was presenting to you some of the examples. I think a lot of people could be familiar with this technique in uh, one way or another. Uh, but basically what it is about is to stimulate, again, stimulate and provoke stakeholders' way of thinking by imagining alternative futures can challenge their existing views. And to do that, one of the ways to think about it is, you know, to think about different futures in terms of their being possible, plausible, probable, or preferable. I think a lot of people are familiar with, with the future cons. Um, but yeah, that, that's one way to, to think about it and how can you choose these futures. Like in the example that Marcela brought from the Branch Reloaded, if you think about these examples, some of them are more probable one of them, the community incubator that Marcela mentioned was a preferable one by some of the stakeholders. So they were like, yeah, we want this one. So in a way it was a preferable scenario for some people, again, not everyone, but for some, uh, you know, and some of them are more like possibilities or potential scenarios or things maybe that are not quite probable yet or don't seem really possible, but still are an existing alternative that can as Marcella was showing you with examples, can bring some discussions and some points uh, to the table that, that you can take later to the project, maybe to, to come up with some other ideas, you know. And uh, the tips for, for this exercise is exactly to think bold. Don't be afraid to present any controversial scenarios. In fact, you should present controversial scenarios because this is the moment when you are exploring all these tensions and all these potential alternatives. You can go pretty crazy, you know, because it's all about stimulating and provoking discussion in different directions rather than just, you know, exploring the, the views of the stakeholders. It's just, you know, provoke them. So for this, you can find some evocative images 
especially if they can be interpreted in multiple ways, exactly to provoke that discussion, you know. And, you know, for this exercise, it's enough to put one image per scenario to keep it simple. But with this, you can go as crazy as you want. You can create a mood board, you can create a storyboard, you can create pro prototypes in your work. There are multiple ways how you could represent those potential futures. Uh, it's up to you, it's up to your project, it's up to your imagination. But for this particular exercise, you will just keep it very simple and we will go with one image uh, per scenario of let's say three scenarios that we want you to, to think of with the title and a little description or keywords just to just to represent what you mean, okay? So what we recommend, it's really just to come up with these three scenarios. You can brainstorm different, different titles, different scenarios uh, in a divergence mode. Uh, then you can converge to choose three uh, of potential direction that, sh that the future could go. And you find the images and a little bit of description or keywords to represent your ideas. Okay, so these are the two exercises that we would like you to do in this time, in this breakup time. Yeah, and we have uh, five or oh, no, three different uh, cases. One, for example, is a supermarket, for example, Walmart and the future of the grocery shopping. Um, and then we have different scenarios like an airline, for example, Lutansa, that it would be the future of business travel. So we will set our mindsets as the lead of a project in this, in this organization and what could be the opposite directions, the strategic directions that we could bring to the leadership so we can have a, a discussion and a conversation with them. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the I, brief is basically, sorry, you are the design lead of, of the project and you're about to interview some high leadership from different silos. So we are preparing these interviews uh, with, the, with the prompts below, okay? So you don't have to fill in those prompts in a way that you are already interviewing someone, but imagine you are preparing those tools for, for this exercise, yeah? And some tips for that, again, so we recommend divergence and convergence. So diverge and converge to come up with these specific scenarios, brainstorm and then choose what you want. Uh, one suggestion as well that GPS exercise, so the opposites here, do not need to be directly linked to the future scenarios, like it doesn't need to translate directly into scenarios, but it could, it can if, if, you, if you want, but in the case of strategic GPS, it also can go more into like, is it paid, is it not paid, is it, uh, you know, more, more organizational things within their organization, not necessarily linked to the future vision as such, but you know, more tactical things as well could be here included. So it can be linked, but not necessarily, depends on you. Uh, again, this is about preparing interview material, not performing the interview yet. So think how, about how it can help you stimulate or provoke richer conversation. We will have 40 minutes for both scenarios. So we suggest split it 2020, but again, it's up to you. It's up to your team how do you split the workload. You have 40 minutes in total, okay? We will be visiting the teams uh, sometimes, <laughs> but we will not be facilitating so much. So we will be there just in case you have any doubts or questions or you need some suggestions. So we'll be there, but- uh, And also yeah. don't feel that you have to onboard us when, when we join the team. Like we can just listen and if some question emerges, like we just answer or we just yeah. like help out. Uh, but yeah, so you can keep in the flow of the team. Exactly. Um, I, we are sure that there's a lot of senior uh, participants in your teams. We, distribute, we try to distribute you in a way that, that I'm pretty sure that you will have very rich conversations about uh, strategic conversations with uh, high level uh, stakeholders. Yeah, and at the end, well, some teams will present uh, their findings and their reflections and their work. So just be aware of that. And if you want to choose a presenter at the end, please, please do so. Any questions? Uh, 
Hello, welcome back to the afterlife. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> cool. <laughs> nice back one. Everyone back, let's see. Okay, everyone should be back by now, no? Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Sorry? Okay, guys, so um, how was it? How was it? Tell us a little bit about your experience. It was really fun. <laughs> it was actually fun. Okay, maybe if there's a, there are any volunteers to present uh, their work quickly, like in a, in a two minutes or so, just to present what, what are your ideas and just main reflections that you had after this exercise. Are there any volunteers? We were the first ones to come back, so maybe would you okay. like? Okay, yeah. Okay, so that's group number six, six. and it's a gym chain. Yes. First, the future of fitness training. Okay. Should I bring everybody here? Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone is here yet. Okay, I thought everyone is here. No, bring everybody to the board. To the board. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, everybody. Forced to yeah. follow me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that works. So, uh, yeah, so we had the, the future of fitness and training. Uh, and as you can see from all the below, um, uh, two by twos uh, or uh, strategic GPSs. We, uh, we, we did a lot of them and then we discarded half of them. But the ones that we ended up with uh, was uh, whether it's about fitness or exercise only versus more holistic well-being. So both the body and the mind and the soul, uh, but taking an entirely different approach uh, to that. Another really good one uh, is remote versus in-person. Um, and then one from an HR perspective, uh, is it crowdsourced or is it run by super specialists? Mm. Uh, then we discussed uh, mm. the sort of dichotomy between outcome-based fitness so that you pay for the outcomes or whether you pay mm. for the time or the service, which is the typical approach today. Um, and along the lines of that also, whether it's purely data-driven or whether potentially there's a no data collected policy. Mm. Uh, and then maybe, uh, Andrea, will, will uh, you do yeah, the, yeah. Few, the uh, three future scenarios? Yeah, yeah I'll do. Uh, actually, the observation that we had here, initially, we brainstormed these scenarios probably from the marketing or business development standpoint, and then looked uh, at those from the silo perspective. So this is how we come up with something from HR, like uh, this crowdsource run by super specialists, mm -hmm. or from data, you know, purely data-driven or no data policy or outcome-based and so on and so forth. So thinking out of the silo really help. Uh, hmm. I will start with this scenario, so maybe you will continue with yours. Uh, the, the, the one that came up to, uh, to our mind initially was something on the extreme. Uh, now, you know, not maybe not very safe to exercise in the, in, in, in the premises, so maybe the outdoor fitness is the future. And we thought uh, maybe it should be something which is more community-based, like calisthenics, and you use whatever there is out there on the street and expand the amount of services uh, that, that, or products that you have, like from the yoga to Tai Chi and so on and so forth. And the important note, take it from the physical only to the well-being only, including the soul. That mm -hmm. was Would you like to continue, David? Yeah, of course. Quickly mm -hmm. wrapping up. Yeah. Yeah, we'll speed up. So uh, the two other ones are one is a virtual only gym. Uh, the tagline is in a post COVID world following the rise of at home exercise, the future of the gym is to be fully remote, uh, perhaps even de scope to be only one single touch point and app. And then the last one is the no people data only gym. Uh, so the idea is here that it's operated purely by robotics and fully integrated with tons of wearables and sensors. And it's an all day, all year gym, quote unquote, that employers pay for their employees to have access to and they can follow their overall health. Oh. So the companies pay for the outcomes, not the service. Interesting, that's a good one. Great, thank you. That was really inspiring. <laughs> Great job. Okay, uh, before we move into the discussion about the reflections that we have, is there any other group that would like to quickly present their results that they really wanna present their results? 
So I would like to present our okay. Which, <laughs> which group are you? Which, which second. 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 Okay, let's go to the second team. And I just want to present not so much because I think um, it's we went super far, but I want to just show a little bit more the, the the process that we went through. So what you can see is that we created a few more axes in our strategic GPS. I think that the biggest challenge that we had in the team was to um, uh, make this distinction between customer focused or strategy focus. So we um, very quickly all the time went to, but from the customer point of view, so how to um, balance those. And then um, we came up with these, um, what is it, two, four, six axes. Um, and I think that most of it also came from the whole Corona perspective because it's all about business travel. And of course, um, well, business travel got hit pretty hard by Corona. So it was um, a lot of the, the, the conversation went into, is everything going to change and do we want to focus on that change or is everything going to stay the same and therefore actually we have to focus on the same. So for example, what you then see in um, the ideas that we thought about is the fast pass travel in your own bubble. So that's very um, well inspired by Corona. So you don't want to have any um, dist distraction, no, uh, um, no distance um, or distance only, sorry. Um, no direct contact, very focused on your own hygiene and your own um, travel in your own bubble. I don't know what's happening in Miro, but I'm just going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one is very focused on the high-end customer to talk about tailor-made um, experiences for the customer. Like, for example, if business travel is going to be less, we have to then make it more interesting and get also more money out of that. Um, so it's all about high-end tailor-made solutions, but for higher cost. And the third is all about um, creating some um, guidance in finding your own way throughout the whole experience from some days before till some days after um, so that you don't have to think about it and everything goes automated um, and everything is fixed for you. And that was it. Thanks. Very interesting. Um, okay. So now I'm going to share uh, very quickly, and in this case, we are not going to do an exercise, but I think it's just an idea of how to map the stakeholder visions. And something that came out while people was working in, in some of the teams is that it, because we have the customer hat, we are like uh, approaching the, 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 the stakeholder vision, almost very customer centric like, but I think that the focus is very much about in internally in the organization how to set the play the play field so we can play football or basketball or volleyball or whatever we want to play inside, but that we know how big is the in the court. Um, but we will always do customer research and we will always bring the customer insights to design and to do the final design. It's just this stakeholder vision map is only to set up the field, but not to design. So that, that's one like a great thing. Um, this stakeholder vision is that that's the main goal to like learn about the organization latest direction or future direction and bring clarity back to the team and know where is the space the team can ideate or should be like bringing ideas and how disruptive they can be. So normally when we are like, we've been using this map and we've been using it in other projects, we actually went after doing the research and the interviews with the high level stakeholders, we come back and do the map in a way that we put in the top part, the more general vision, like the high level future of the organization, what the goals of the organization are and probably what the stakeholders think that the goals of the customer will be, because sometimes they have some hypotheses or some hunches. And we also want to all after bring the customer side and contrast that. Are they right with their hunches? Or no, actually look, what customers are doing is this, but at least you know what they are thinking and, and the rest of the team too. 
then the disruptive scenarios we could put it in kind of a almost like after level because we are trying to to poke them and push them a little bit like their buttons to so to see where they shout where they say i no there or something like that no like what tickles their heart and then we can go to more like specific questions. Is it going to be digital? Is it going to go human? Is it going to be more external or more internal or more outsourced or insourced or paid or free? Or there's so many models today that we can explore and directions that it can be quite confusing when you are working inside a very strategic project where there's no clarity in where the company is going towards. So you want to bring that clarity through this map. And uh, also the plurality, because you want to also bring like, what are all these like little voices that are still like thinking in a different way? Because sometimes those are also valuable and we want to know why they are thinking still in a different way or why, why they are these tensions. They are, I think, called strategic tensions. Um, and also maybe some even tactical directions like what is going more local or more global, like the metrics are going to be more like more global and the team structure is going to be more local or the platform is going to be more global and the components. So like where are like certain questions that the team has? And you didn't saw this because of privacy, but it's always good to see which, uh, part which people participated in, in these interviews and maybe in which state because directions of companies change. And if someone finds this document, they can know that at certain point, the organization thought about things like this way. But probably that was previous Corona. And maybe after Corona, you do the same interviews and people would be thinking different and the organization would have a different thought. Um, so it's a way to align all those different issues. So like we want to set up a little last discussion about your reflections. Like, I think there's very powerful reflections out there, the exercise. And I guess for that, we will go back uh, for the QA and a cameras on, we will go back to our, our Zoom. Please. Okay, so opening up the discussion now, we have what is left of the time just to hear comments. Uh, I don't know if, if you have any questions, that's the time to do that. Some of the questions I heard in the groups, I uh, was taking notes as well. Um, some of the teams, well, when I, when I joined them and you commented that in your presentations, we're coming up with a lot of uh, GPS uh, options, GPS extremes, and it's very good to have lots of them. And for sure, in every project, you can explore many different directions. But when you use that for interviews with stakeholders or any interviews, it's actually good to limit uh, GPS points to several key ones that you make sure that they are the ones that are the richest and the ones that uh, can provoke the most the most discussion probably for you. And again, you can use that for interviews. I also use this for workshops. So you give a set of extremes to teams, for example, and they discuss it in the teams and then you bring the teams together and you have like a mapped uh, the whole the whole direction of all the teams so you can use it in different contexts really it's it's really up to you again it's a tool we are all professional designers so we can manage this the way we want and feel is right okay um question can i yes what, what kind kind of team do you deem optimal the good to come up with the with these directions this um, dimensions do you come up with them with as a designers or with the stakeholders or with the broader team? Yeah, normally there's a core team in a project, like a very close team. And it can be like the, the, the sponsor of the project with the corest of the team, the core part of the team. And the questions start arising from the beginning, like from the debriefing part, uh, part of the project. When you start making your proposal of how to approach the project, you start seeing that there's some confusion or there's some like ambivalence or tensions that there's no clarity. So you start like gathering that and that could help you to see where your GPS could go. So you need to bring more clarity on certain aspects. I just felt that uh, depending on who you have on the core team, uh, many mm -hmm. dimensions can change. So in a way you can you know, influence. 
Yeah. yeah. Also, the organization is really key. It depends on a, a lot about how transparent the organization is and how much access they give you to high level leadership. Because not all the organizations are giving you that access. Yeah, I, I had a similar question because on my team or where I work, it's um, a fully digital experiences. And our team is really about um, how do we connect the silos of different features? And so a lot of our work is not necessarily a project that someone asked us to do. It's that we see gaps in communication across experiences. And so we have lots of different stakeholders that have their siloed feature or their piece of the product that they're tasked with running with. And so I guess my question was like similar in the sense that um, knowing the right people to pull together to pull that off and also knowing the right amount of people because I could see if obviously if we had too many people ideating it would be really challenging and that's something we struggle with a lot is we're trying to pull a lot of people together having workshops making sure we're inclusive and having everyone represented but not the room isn't so big that we actually are, it isn't very productive because there are so many people who are all chiming in. So. Yeah, no, no, it should be small. Like when you are coming up with extremes, it should be a very core team that you have in your, and one of the future projects. And then they can say, what are the confusions? What are the lack of clarity? And then you go and, and interview the whole, all the other uh, silos. But yeah, to come up with the streams, you have a small, a small team. So what's an example of how you use the GPS in interviews? Uh, well, uh, we used it in this project uh, because it was quite strategic in the branch loaded. Uh, I think uh, Alexandra has used it in workshops. Yeah, I use it in a couple of workshops as well on a strategic level with stakeholders from different countries coming together for a workshop. And again, it was interesting to see because first they did an exercise in smaller teams within the workshop and then all the teams were brought together and mapped their results in a big board. So you mm -hmm. had different levels to this and it was very interesting as well how they map it within the team. And of course, in this case, depending who is on the team, they were also mapping it differently and then bring it back together to a big board, like the whole group view is always also interesting to see and the discussions, you know, between the teams, which in a way through this exercise kind of took a standpoint uh, together as well, you know, through discussion in the group about the GPS, because you are mm -hmm. aligning already while you are mm -hmm. discussing these things in the group context, not in an interview, you are already aligning your group through this exercise as well. So in the workshops, so if you've got your lenses from the GPS and you've got a workshop, are you mapping their journey, their current journey based on the GPS? Or are you really getting more into ideation based on those GPS lenses? That's kind of where I'm, is it current versus future that you're, once you have those initial GPS lenses, mm -hmm. are you mm -hmm. back, what can we do with this in the future? Yeah. Are you I'll apply that so to it's up to you on the focus on your project like in my, my case it was already towards the future so you're thinking like how it's going to be yeah it was more mm -hmm. this idea because as is I mean that could be interesting as well maybe to use it you know to see different viewpoints of and experiences of the current situation maybe you know that's that could be another case if that applies to you uh, maybe if I said to current situation is not clear Okay, okay. For people, that could be a use case to, yeah. to use that, you know. Yeah, the best. <laughs> when I think of interviewing, I think of current state and then workshops ideation. Yeah. So that, that yeah. Also. So again. What do you do when you find new ideas or insights going through these interviews that you hadn't captured in the GPS? Uh, that you haven't captured and you do that you prepare the tool and you are in a situation that you already find something new that's that's a good question actually <laughs> uh, and i would put it as a comment to that i mean again it's a prompt so whatever you get more out of this it's it's even better you know if it provokes any other thoughts on the top of it you take it and you put it in your later analysis as well i would say yeah that yeah, I think that when you're on cover intentions, it's very possible that if you are interviewing a lot of silos, uh, silo heads or like high level leadership, one of them comes to like, 
oh, but you haven't thought about this. And yeah. Say, but it, it's very interesting this question as well, because in terms of what Marcela commented, when you are later, like you have to think it about how, what is the process that you are doing as well, because uh, if your final intention is to map it in this huge stakeholder vision map, it's also good to be consistent through the interviews. So you are always mapping the same topics. So you later you can represent all the votes at the end, accumulative, for example. But again, if something new appears and you feel like, okay, I have to include it, you know, you have to think of ways, how can you make this uh, uh, valid representation at the end as well. So just something to think about what is your final final representation? What is your final uh, deliverable of this? Yeah, I think that we have also to be careful because at some point we were talking like working with a um, very, I mean, the business stakeholder that asked us for our design project, they were happy and they were saying, oh, just this stakeholder map is enough. That problem solved, we have a project. And they're like, no, no, no. We need to bring the customer, we bring to design based in the customer, not design based in the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So please don't do stakeholder driven design, like do customer driven design. It's just to set the field where, where is the space of play, but the design has to be customer, customer centered. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I think when I see how fleshed out the stakeholder map is and how scientific or how quantitative it looks, it almost feels like well, we would have to be really careful. And I know at my company to make sure that it doesn't feel like this is the recommendation. Like, no, this isn't the recommendation. This is just a summary of these interviews, but we have more work to do. Yeah. 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 That, there's, that requires a little bit of education, um, but yeah, it's achievable. But, you know, imagine you do the same exercise with the users as well, and then you compare. That could be a very powerful thing as yeah. well. You know, the, the, two, the two viewpoints clearly represented visually because again, it's about also how do you represent it and how impactful it is at the end as a result. Yeah. I also see that we have some feedback for on the right and some people have already given some little comments. Yes, please. Uh, we have like three minutes left. Uh, feel free to leave feedback. That will be very helpful for us as well. Um, yes. Uh, the duration of the workshops, uh, when you, when oh. you use the, the GPS, I mean, I think it's, there are workshops that have many other activities. The GPS is one of them for aligning. So when, normally when we use the GPS in a workshop, it's alongside the uh -huh. other activities. So the, the exercise can be quite short, like almost as short as you have done it. Mm -hmm. How often are you running these types of things? So for example, pre post COVID, what has what uh, been your experience with a good cadence of getting people together um, and consistently thinking about future scenarios? Um, it all depends on the organization. Like these projects were at least we had two a year uh, in BBVA, I think they are more common. They, they do have a lot of strategic work uh, maturity within the design team. Uh, in other organizations that the design team is less uh, aligned with that strategic level, it's less common. So I must say that, for example, in my current organization, I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. Are there usually triggers that cause an organization to come to you to do some future work? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's the mature, more than triggers is the maturity of the design practice. Is that if you have projects that had like a strategic impact already, then they will invite you more and more to make this type of, of work. Mm -hmm. So I think in BBVA, they already had collaborate, like previous collaborations for Ranch of the Future with IDEO and with design continuum. So for them, it was very natural to request a future of the branch to the design team or mm -hmm. a future of the human. Uh, we did one after this where we use similar tools, uh, the hum uh, future of the human, 
like what are the humans going to mean in the future of the bank services? Are, they, are we going to need humans? What are they going to be valuable for? What skills they should have? Uh, how will be attracting these humans to be to be attractive to work in a bank because you know banks have had such a bad uh, reputation. Mm -hmm. That would be an interesting one to do. Yeah, it was. Um, but I think we are running out of time, and uh, I think I would like to say thanks to you and of course to Alexandra. That is always a pleasure to work with her, and say congratulations because. She's looking to the space now. <laughs> well, that, that's another another story <laughs> for another chapter. But yeah, thank you so much. We are uh, uh, we are on the time now, so it was a pleasure to share this time with you. Hopefully, this exercise was useful. Uh, we will keep you the access to Miro for some time at least, I guess. So you can also keep uh, posting comments, keep uh, posting feedback. Uh, we will be having a look. And then the board as well, we'll be checking it from time to time. So feel free to use it and feel free to use the tools that we presented to you. Hopefully they are useful and there were some good reflections for your organizations as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being a great team. <laughs> great good work, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, good good work. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.